Hello and welcome back. We are here at Dreamforce, uh, the flagship event of Salesforce. And um, we're going to discuss about something very exciting now. Uh, unified platforms. We're going to talk about agentic, of course. Uh, we're going to talk about deterministic versus probabilistic use cases uh, in using agents. And to discuss this, I'm here with MK. MK, how are you? Great, thank you for allowed to be here talking to you about this new revolution that we're having. Excellent. MK, um, you are the president and CTO of Salesforce. That's right. Uh, and you are also managing the unified platform. Can you tell us That's a bit more about Yeah, I run the engineering for all the applications and the platform. Okay. So what you hear about, about Agent Force 360, right, and all the applications built around it, the data behind it, all of that stuff is in my team. Wow, that's a lot of lot of work and a lot of responsibilities. Okay, and a lot of fun too. So. Yes, yes, um, and I think it's it's critical to be able to connect the different parts of the platform so that they speak to each other and right. you create kind of a synergy that's across right. CRM, sales, uh, marketing, marketing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think this has been a journey for us. So if you really think about it, take any business on the planet, any business, healthcare, finance. Uh, anything, what do they need to sell their product? You need to first advertise, Yes. right? They need to market, they need to sell it. Maybe there's an online commerce. They need to service it. Once they buy the product, you need to analyze it, right? To see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then in the back end, you got to make sure your employees are connected with that, right? And so on. And guess which company is the number one in all of that? Salesforce, Yes. right? But, but to make that happen, the problem that we often have is that sometimes these things are silo. Like how many times have you gone, clicked on a website where you're you actually buy something and then there's an ad that's following you for the next three weeks. It's like, you're like, I already bought the product. Why are you still selling me the ad? Because the systems aren't connected. Yes. Their advertising is not connected to their marketing. Or how many times you go to a website, nobody even bothers to call you back because they don't know who you are. Yes. Because again, marketing is not connected to sales. Mm. Or how many times you call up a service number and they literally don't know you got even the product, right? <laughs> so when you have these disparate systems, you cannot give a good customer experience. And there is no good employee experience as well behind the scenes. Yes. And that's really why we built this sort of unified platform, grounded in data and enhanced by agents so that you can agentify your entire customer experience and your employee experience. Excellent. And I, I love this because the, um, a lot of the employee experience is currently uh, doomed by friction. Uh, right. Moving from one system to another, copying, right. pasting. Exactly. And, and this is draining people, basically. And, and there was a recent uh, a survey on that. 70% of employees are drain yeah. because of those transactional activities they have right. to do every day. Right. And having these systems that can talk to each other. It's uh, huge, right? It's, it's a huge gain, not only for customers, but also for employees. Correct. And, and then uh, the second level is this, right? One is it about bringing all the data together. The second is agentifying it. So that you still don't have to go look up 10 different things. You literally can ask a question and the agents can actually tell you what it is. I'll give a very simple example. Yes. Within Salesforce itself, uh, a salesperson, if they have to go talk to a customer, they had to look up 15 different systems. They had to look up what we called as Org 62, which is our sales thing to say, oh, I'm going to talk to customer XYZ. What did they buy from us? What have they done, etc. Then they had to go look up documents outside to say, okay, what, what, like, who's their sort of people in there that I'm talking to and so on. Then they had to look up their cases to see, okay, do they have some open cases? Right, like I'm going in, is it a hot customer? Is it a happy customer? We don't know, right? So you got to look up cases. That's in a different system. And then you got to go look up uh, all the last email conversations you've had with them, right? Who all done. Imagine so much sort of stuff spread around. What we were able to do is pull all that together. With our unified platform, with Data360, we pulled all the data together. Now with Agent3, Agent Force 360 we were able to agentify it. So all a service person has to do today is open up, and this is in Slack, so they just go to sales agent in Slack before the meeting. They just tell me, hey, I'm going to meet this customer XYZ. Please tell me everything you know about them. It Im immediately summarizes everything you want to know about the customer. Their temperature, what have they done, who have they had conversations with, what you should actually be talking to them about. 
Imagine the productivity gate, hours and hours saved just for one meeting. Beautiful. That is the power of our unit. Beautiful, platform. beautiful. And um, you touched a little bit about it, but uh, the data is yes. also a very important component yes. here. Correct. Because you're using the same data for all the applications. Yes. All of this is unified again. That is correct. And this means one single version of the truth. That's correct. Uh, that, that, see, this is very huge because the biggest problem in every enterprise is data is fragmented, yes. right? Across many, many systems. That's true even in Salesforce. And the problem with that is, like I said, the original problem happens, which is you don't know when a customer calls, you don't know much about them except that particular system you're in, right? But now with our Data360, you can combine all that data together, virtually or physically, and now you can get a 360 view of what the customer said. I know Pascal opened his email or he didn't respond to the email. He had a sales call. You had like a service call. You had like these many products you bought, everything in one shot. So imagine as a human, that's gold for me when I'm talking to you. As an agent, it's vital because like with the wrong data, the agent's no, going to hallucinate, right? Definitely. Now with the right data, the agents can actually go much, much more. And you are kind of the glue uh, in your role to connect all this and create that's this correct. unification. That is correct. That's, and, that's, and actually that's where it's like brilliant. Like if you, if you were in the keynote, you saw the William Sonoma example, right? Which is a beautiful sous chef, sous -chef uh, example of how we can be creative, where initially you're trying to find some ideas for what to do. Yes. At the same time, subtly, it also doing two things. It knows what you have purchased. So it can tell you, hey, maybe you should go use that like pot that you bought last week and use it, right? It makes you feel it's a different experience when the agent is talking to you in your language. Yeah. It as if like a human was talking to you, yeah. right? Like, hey, you bought this thing. It's a personalized experience. There, there's a continuity in the experience. That's, right. and, that, and this Correct. is what is lacking today. Huh? That's right. Most of the applications we have, when you, you need to repeat everything. It's not everything. transactional uh, anymore, right? Yeah, like, it's right. like, oh, you buy this, you're done. I'm, I forget about you. Repeat to me everything you've done in the past, and then I can help you. That's <laughs> right. Now it's not anymore. It's not anymore. It's, it's, because because think about any, any uh, customer conversations you have. The best uh, shopping experience you have in any, any sort of brand, is when the brand knows about you, right? It's like your own personal sort of uh, agent, right? Where you're there, it knows about you, it's talking to you, uh, it knows your history, it knows your emotion, it's able to talk to you in your terms. Yes. Right, that's really where we are headed. Beautiful. Um, I heard during the keynote um, a new feature which lets you choose whether your process that you will automate with yeah. agents is deterministic or probabilistic. That's correct. Correct? That's correct. I would love to know more about Great that. Great Because, because yeah. just to give some context to, 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 to the audience, uh, we see today some, some um, issues coming because of the use of probabilistic large language models right. uh, in transactions that are important, for example, yes. where you need to have 100% control correct. over what's happening. I'm thinking of banking, financial transactions, yeah. health, health issues, and so exactly. um, uh, While in the past, we used to have those deterministic systems where you needed to explain every, to configure the system in the detail for a, each and every possibility of a process happening. Right. So it was longer, Correct. more difficult Correct. to build, but at least it was 100% controllable. Right. And this is what we call deterministic. Yes. So, so now, so you have kind of a switch, if I understand well, yes. where you can choose for one specific process to have a yeah. probabilistic. So we'll, we'll, let me step back. So we used to have this thing called bots before, yes. right? Bots were a very deterministic system where it will say, if the customer asks X, go here. It's like a flowchart, yeah. right? Rule-based. Rule-based, right? Yeah. And it could get unwieldy. One of our customers has 24 pages <laughs> of flowchart. Yes. Imagine even debugging it, right? <laughs> like yeah. making sure. Yeah. But with agents, it simplified it dramatically because you can take the intent right there from the question, a natural language question. It doesn't have to accurately match exactly what the bot kind of thing said and then be able to do. But it also comes with its inherent problems because LLMs hallucinate, yeah. right? And that's something we learned, like the William Sonoma example as, a, as an example. You want two different things, right? When initially you're looking at the, the, uh, the recipes, you want it to be creative, you want to yes. explore, right? You don't want a hard code to say you should only say this. But once I know the recipe, 
the steps in the recipe better be deterministic. Yeah, yeah. And it's like saying, put water first or like put it in the oven first and then put water later, right? Imagine yes. that, right? And so, so we had to basically then teach our agent force to be able to say, be creative, be like kind of like open and explore with the LLMs. And then when it comes to rigorous steps, like you said, it's a banking transaction or maybe it's a security thing. I got to make sure this person is logged in before I can let them do X, Y, Z. So in these cases, we have to then bring in a deterministic set of steps. Yes. And so that's what we call as agent script, which kind of blends the two. So you can actually put your if then else, for loops kind of thing, but also let the LLMs do the creativity aspects yes. of it. That has been a huge thing. So that is on the planner and reasoner side. There's the other aspect of agents too, which is when it's answering actual data questions, like take Tableau, since you were in the Tableau context yes. a few years ago. So imagine if I'm asking a question about a specific value, like what's going to be my growth rate next year? You cannot hallucinate and say, hey, it's probably 20%, oh, it's probably 50%, your business is demanding <laughs> on that data. And so when you get into that as well, we have built a lot of stuff in Tableau and in data increases to say, let's create semantic models. And AI and agent forces helping you create the right models where you can define what an NPS means for your business, what as usage means for your business, what does ACV mean for your business, right? And make sure you guide the LLL so that when somebody asks a question, what is going to be my uh, open opportunities for the next, uh, next quarter, you know what open means for your business, right? and you know what opportunity means for your business, and you should be able to go translate with the right SQL so you can actually give you the right answer. So, both from reasoner and planner, as you're conversing with the customers, is something we have blended deterministic and uh, uh, non-deterministic, and also on answering questions in Tableau, in Concierge, or other places, we have made sure we can put the right safeguards by using the right metadata so that the LLMs can go answer that question. I love it. So it's not only the one or the other, right. probabilistic so or the it's, it's a combination, it's a combination of both for specific that's correct. components in a, in, a, in, a, in a very process. That's correct. That and, yeah. and this is all hard learning, right? Because I mean, we're all learning <laughs> as an industry. It's like, what are the LLMs do? <laughs> it's like, so, I had a CEO that I've been helping who told me, are you telling me that those agents are using large language models, the same that we are using on ChatGPT to make poems <laughs> yeah, yeah. that my kids are using for stories, and they will do my transactions or financial transactions? No. <laughs> How can I believe that? <laughs> so I think the right thing Actually, is really yeah. the combination. Yeah, that's of it. It's an interesting one, right? When the iPhone first came out, if you remember, people said, oh, this is a consumer product. It'll never come into the enterprise, right? Yes. I have my Blackberries, I have my other things, but guess what happened? I think it's the same here, yeah, we're seeing. Exactly. But, but the difference is this. He's correct that if you just use the chat GPT or just the LLM and plonk it into his financial business, it's going to collapse. Because in an enterprise, you need the safeguards of data, Definitely. you need the safeguards of your business workflows, and you need to use the power of the LLM in the workflow itself. When you see a salesperson, your service, your loan finance officer, and so on. And so that's really why Agent Course was born. Right? Because LLMs are like a nuclear power. You can't just use them and, and get radiated. You've got to kind of harness them in a way, I think, so that you can actually enjoy the power in the right way. Thank you so much, MK. One last question. Right. What, what excites you about the future on what you're working currently and what you're building, your vision, basically, for the Yeah, future? I think it's, it's an exciting future that we are seeing. Like, I think every day, our customers are sort of pushing us to new boundaries. And every day we are learning with all our customers as well. And the ability that we can really have a tool that can go beyond just answering questions to really automating all of your enterprise. And we call this the agent tech enterprise today. Every aspect of your business, whether you're an engineer, you're a product person, you're a salesperson, service rep, marketing, HR, doesn't matter. We're going to make the lives more productive. Like remove the drudgery out of the work and really sort of make everybody more productive and happy and really creating and making the best out of themselves. That is what I'm super excited about. I love it. Uh, just one last word for the, the audience that are watching us and who haven't yet started their journey. What yes. would you be your recommendation? Absolutely. I think the best tool we have is something called Trailhead. 
I would highly encourage all of you to go to Trailhead and it's free resource for all of you. What it allows you to do is start from where you're comfortable with, from level zero all the way to the most pro of it. You, and it's also gamified. You can become rangers, oh, you can yeah. become expeditioners, so on. It's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. Point. Good for the everything. team, good for the, the yeah. idea. And it's all hands-on too. It's not just some document you're reading. You can play around with it. We automatically create the orgs for you. You can play around, learn it. That would be my first thing. The second is certainly watch like your podcasts. Uh, and uh, we have tons of material on YouTube from Salesforce. All the Dreamforce keynotes are live. So go watch it. Salesforce Plus is another great resource for you to go deep as well. Amazing. Thank you so much, MK. Thank you, Pastor. Thanks to you for, uh, for watching us. That was, as you've heard, the, the music is calling us yes. for the rest of the event. That was an amazing event till now. And, and um, we are looking forward for the next few hours, the end of the event. Um, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Take care.